Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Rot Gut Review. I am Ed, and today is Friday! Oh yeah, that means we're talking about the best kind of whiskey on the planet, bar none, rye whiskey. Now, I've been away from WhiskeyTube for a little while, and I've been really trying to catch up on so many channels and so many videos, just trying to watch a ton of stuff. And the other day, I was watching Black Bourbon Family, which seems like a fantastic channel. Really like them. They were doing a video of the five ryes you need. Now, I guess this is something you're supposed to get challenged to by another channel. Another channel is supposed to do a list, and then they challenge you, and so on and so forth, and blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to wait on that. I'm ready to talk about rye right now. So here, without further ado, is my list of the five ryes you need. Now let's talk about the ryes I've chosen for this list. Because these ryes, they're not the most expensive ryes. In fact, I've tried to pick mostly ryes that are relatively inexpensive. And they're not the rarest ryes. I've tried to pick ryes that are pretty much available. Are these my favorite ryes? Do I think these are the best ryes out there? In some cases, yes. But more importantly, what this list does is show you the diversity of ryes. When I say the diversity of rye whiskey, I'm talking about three major styles that I have found through my ridiculous, maybe excessive drinking of rye whiskey. I've talked about this before. I have a belief that rye as a whole generally fall into three categories with predominant flavors. Generally, you have fruity rinds, usually have a peach note in there. Then you have your spicy rinds, black pepper, dill, black licorice. And then you have your more vegetal rinds. These ones can be eucalyptus -y, sometimes even like wet greenery. And I'm gonna make a video talking more about my theories about how to taste and smell rye That'll probably come out next week. But for now, that's the basic idea that you need to know. So I've chosen ryes that are good examples of all three of those categories and also fulfill some other functions I think a rye whiskey needs to do. So let's talk number one. Number one is actually Michter's rye, which for those of you who have watched the channel before, you may be a little surprised about that because Michter's is not the rye that I personally really love. Michter's runs very sweet, right? It's, it's very similar to a bourbon in many ways. It's super light on the spice. It's got no dill. It's got no black licorice. But you know what it does have? Fruitiness. It is a good example of a stone fruit forward rye. And it fulfills a specific function. That function being sharing it with your bourbon loving friends. My girlfriend Erica absolutely hates rye, but you know what she loves? Michter's, because it tastes like bourbon. It's very, very bourbony. It's a great gateway rye. It's a great way to get somebody to start drinking rye, to start thinking about rye. Which brings me to number two. Number two actually also functions pretty damn well as a gateway rye in and of itself. But this is also a rye that I think dedicated rye drinkers can really, really love. And that's Old Forester rye. Now this is the original Old Forester rye. They did, however, just release a new cask strength rye, which I'm kind of expecting to blow this one out of the water. We'll see. I haven't gotten to try it yet. This stuff is awesome. And it's awesome because it has elements of what makes a really good rye, a really good rye, but also elements that are different from most other rye. Old Forester has a really, really cool floral note. And it runs with a certain amount of vegetal, eucalyptus -y stuff. But with that floral note capped on top, just to give it that little extra something. Some people also say they get like a bubblegum taste off of it. I don't personally find that as much, but I know it's something people really like. 
This stuff is really cool. It leans into vegetalness in a way that's more floral without getting into like really rotten leaves. And it really doesn't have the really, really heavy black licorice or dill that drives some people away. And despite its lack of spiciness, I think it's complex and cool enough for even like hardcore rye drinkers like me to get into. Plus, nice high proof, you can make a Manhattan out of it. Which brings me to number three. Speaking of Manhattans, this next one is one I love to put in a Manhattan. And that's something I think you need. Even if you drink your whiskey neat 95% of the time, you ought to have a whiskey you can make an old fashioned with and a Manhattan with. And that Manhattan, oh, but, oh, whoops. that Manhattan is more important to my mind. And that's why I love Lot 40. Yes, this is a Canadian rye, but guess what? It drinks like an American. And Canadian ryes with actual rye flavor are actually becoming more and more available to us here in the United States. Just look at Alberta Premium Cast Strength. That stuff's awesome. And I would have put it on this list were it not as allocated and hard to find as it is. Lot 40 really does hit that spice note for me. It's got the right amount of dill. It's got the right amount of black licorice. It's sitting right in that middle category with that pepper. Love this stuff. And it makes a great Manhattan. Now let's talk about number four. Number four, I really dig. Number four is Dad's Hat. Now I was talking about how Old Forester has a certain vegetalness that runs more floral and a little bit sweeter. Dad's Hat has a vegetalness that goes all out. This is that pure greenery, that wet eucalyptus. It is big, it is powerful. It is earthy and leafy and greenery. And it's cool because on top of that stuff, you get this cool, bitter dark chocolate note. You don't usually find that so much with other rides. So it's really hitting that third category, vegetalness, plus it's got this extra neat little thing on top of it. So yes, Dad's Hat Pennsylvania rye, I'm into it. I'm a big fan, get one of those. But now, let's talk about number five. Now number five, I think I'm gonna kick myself for recommending to everyone because it's only gonna increase the madness over this particular product. This is my one more allocated product that I put on this list. And it's only become harder to find and as crazy as it is in the last couple of years because people are realizing it's great. And it's Midwinter's Night Dram. Why is this here? Because it's a finished rye and I wanted to include a cool finished rye. This is a whole different ball game though. This kind of breaks up what I was talking about with those three categories. Because well, it is spicy, well, it is black pepper, well, it does have a hint of vegetalness. That port cask creates something way different. That port gives it that big, beautiful, juicy red fruit. And that pairs really well with those baking spices. Now, things do differ batch to batch. So for me, who really likes rye forward, big spicy whiskeys, sometimes in some batches, the port has been over the top. However, I think for the most part, these last few years, they've definitely gotten it right. Now that has been my list of five ryes I think you need. Do you agree with them? Do you disagree with them? Do you think I'm an idiot? Tell me in the comments. So until next time, make sure to stay safe, stay healthy, and stay rotten.